Um, well, I agree with everything that has been said in this table. Uh, I think it's necessary, if possible, some redevelopment, but clearly it's not possible in a city like Bogota. We have four times as many inhabitants per hectare as London, and we have now 2.6 million homes in Bogota and the surrounding municipalities, and we need to build 2.7 more. So the question is where? This is like the London structure. This is, and this is from Urban Age, from LSC, from Ricky, and this is Bogota. So clearly, there is not much room to make redevelopment. Plus, uh, this is London structure. This is some of the areas, low-income areas in Bogota. This is not with high rises that we have high density, uh, although we have some high rises as well. But clearly, we do not have enough public spaces. The NYU Soli Angel, they found in a study that almost 60% of homes in Bogota were farther from 600 from 750 meters from a road which is capable of sustaining public transport. And we don't have land for parks and all of this. So where should Bogota grow? Uh, we hope, we need, we would hope to accommodate the growth, this growth in 40,000 hectares adjacent to the existing city. But if we are not able to plan this, this is going to take 200,000 or 300,000 more hectares uh, and people are going to live very far from, we can have, if we plan this, we can have people living 50 kilometers closer to the city or 50 kilometers farther. We can have a city that moves by public transport or a city that moves by car. The city that we're going to build over the next uh, 40 or 50 years is going to generate more than 5 million daily trips. If those trips are not made by public transport, this is going to be total chaos. How is Bogota growing today? In some, this is the formal low-income developments. Totally, some areas are going only one income level, no income mixes at all, and not very much uh, gracefulness. And this is the other uh, high-income suburban American type, uh, which is taking up huge areas, totally car dependent, in areas where there is not public parks, no roads even for public transport, no public transport. And then we also have the illegal informal development, which is, again, a little less now, but it's still a total mess. Uh, so what we hope to do is to do as best as we can around a polluted small river that we have to turn this river into the center to make it very attractive and to put about 800, this is like in Melbourne, to turn, which a river has similar amount of water as ours, to turn these river banks to put maybe 800,000 homes. But we still have 1.9 million more to go. We have uh, land. See, you see the city here. Very near, we have, in some municipalities, we have thousands, thousands of hectares with perfectly, which actually are closer, some of these, to the center of the cities than some of the area. This could be 30 minutes away by public transfer from the center of the city. It's 20 minutes away, 15 minutes by bicycle to the airport. But then we have the problems that these are different municipalities. And so this is crazy that in many countries, municipalities have total autonomy in the land use. I think for, for, for cities to grow in the right way, it cannot be private interest it can neither private interests nor municipalities, but, either, but instead regional authorities or national authorities which decide where the cities will grow because nothing is more important for rationality. And the last thing is how should Bogota grow? I think we could, developing country cities have a fantastic opportunity to do a totally different urban design which London or New York do not have. This is something that we did. We have about 70 kilometers of these bicycle highways a city that is just going to be built could have hundreds of kilometers of bicycle highways crisscrossing the city in all directions. This New York cannot have, Paris cannot have, London cannot have, we could have. By the way, Bogota has the best temperature in the planet. We don't need either air temperature. So uh, 
all air conditionings or heatings in the world are set to Bogota natural temperature. So if we are able to have sustainable transport, it could be the lowest energy consumption city in the planet because we also have water by gravity. But if we do not plan, it's going to be a total mess. This is the kind of infrastructure that we have and we need, which could have different road infrastructure, roads just for buses and pedestrians. And clearly, any road that is built should be built with exclusive lanes for buses, large sidewalks, bikeways, and so on. So I think both, we need redevelopment in Bogota. We need to redo a, a huge amount of the city, but, but not to increase density, but rather to do a better city with more parks, with more sidewalks, with better roads. Clearly, we cannot have uh, more density. Bogota is already one of the highest density cities in the world, and we do not have conditions to have more density.